welcome back to Bunter's Yard and today we are to uh, have a play with this class 37 from Hornby in EW Nest livery. Um, colours are quite like actually um, but it's a railroad version so it looks a bit plasticky um, and the windows really don't fit I can't move them they're glued in so we're going to um, have a play with the roof now on some of these um, in real life some seem to have black roofs and some don't and some too seem to just be very dirty so uh, but I think there are versions with completely black roofs so that's the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make the roof black so um, I'm, it's it's got a sort of gutter line all the way along so it's quite easy to um, to mask along that line and um, this tape is probably a little bit too too big but actually didn't work out too bad because it covers the whole model in one go down one side so that's great um, so the plan is that the roof we are going to um, we're going to um, use a bit of paint chipping so we'll um, we'll basically paint it in a uh, a metal color and then with um, with the normal roof black gray over the top um, and in between there'll be a chipping medium and we use that to create a chip effect so the paint will come off and um, just looks like it's, it's worn or been painted poorly or has bird strike or whatever so you'll, you'll get the, the idea so we'll just finish masking this up so we've got these lines to follow so which is quite handy As I say, some of these do uh, appear to have black roofs um, from pictures I've looked at. So uh, this, probably this particular running number didn't have a black roof. Otherwise, I, I think maybe even Hornby would have done that on a railroad version. But uh, I'm not totally sure. And those um, little markings, the electrical markings, I do have spares. Those uh, I did uh, consider putting those on. But, um, but just to save a little bit of time for me. I decided not to so we'll start by priming the roof because it's bare plastic and this is black Vallejo um, primer I want to get quite a decent coat on this uh, you can see you need to shoot it from all different angles because you will get um, where well, you've got the detail you'll, you'll get misses if you don't go from all angles so uh, just, just sort of spin it around as you go make sure you you get in all the all the little uh, detail areas and those raised areas so once that's done we need to add on our steel now this is Vallejo air uh, steel so straight out of the bottle comes out quite um, um, so it's a little splattery so I need to have a look see if we can get that finer but um, for this purpose it's actually uh, is actually okay so the fronts uh, above the cabs we're going to uh, completely have them in silver and the rest we're just doing modeling effects and bits where I think that I'll probably um, want some of the paint chipped away and then we're using uh, chipping medium from Vallejo now this comes in a black cap so this is a so it suggests that it, you use it straight out of the bottle like a Vallejo air um, but it's quite thick and um, it comes out kind of um, a bit lumpy really but, like it, uh, but it's not too bad because I think what will happen is that um, as, it, as it dries rather than being all over um, that it will give a nice chip effect which um, which it does, I've used it before. But I don't, um, I haven't thinned this down at all. I have thinned it down before to get a better coverage. But I'm gonna use it like this today just to see uh, see how it goes. I'm not sure if you can see there. So the chibi medium has come out sort of a bit like, um, like a gloopy glue, you can see it there. Anyway, we shall, um, Cover that in 
uh, very dark grey so this is dark grey with black mixed in so I didn't want it completely black um, just wanted some sort of weathering some sort of weathered look rather than being totally black and we'll give that um, a bit of coverage it hasn't got to be pristine so we're going to chip it back um, and we want it to look a little bit sort of weathered So just while we're taking off the uh, the masking, people always ask how long um, let everything dry for. So paint coats are normally only dry for like 10 minutes or so. Uh, they, they dry fairly quickly. The chipping medium I've left for 20 minutes before I then put the next coat on. Uh, and then say give that five or 10 minutes and then we can start chipping. So with, uh, with chipping all we're doing, you use plain water on a soft brush. Um, you mainly a stiffer brush as you go but you you have to feel the way and you can see it starts to lift really quickly so what happens is the water soaks through the uh, the top acrylic layer and then it lifts it straight off the chipping medium and because that chipping medium has come out um, sort of blotchy like a, like a glue it's not coming off in, in your sheets it's coming off in chips which is exactly what we're after and we just need to touch the brush around and just be careful because it does uh, suddenly you'll find it suddenly will come off so you just need to be delicate chip around if it's, uh, if it's a bit stubborn then use a, a tougher brush or a cocktail stick to get it started or whatever you need and just trying to get the pattern that you're after so we're just after the sort of effect that it's uh, it's been painted probably not in the in the best fashion and the sun has then lifted the paint from the uh, from the, the roof, which is possibly aluminium or steel. I'm not sure what they've made of, but I'm sure they're made of some sort of metal. So we put the silver, um, the steel colour around the edges as well. So we're just going to try and expose a bit of that. So along the gutter line there, and maybe some of those um, bolt heads or rivets or whatever they are. And then we need to take our time doing the whole of the roof. Um, just do take some time, it's quite a nice effect to achieve. Just do a piece at a time, don't rush it, don't um, sort of soak the whole of the roof. Just do a little patch at a time. Use different brushes and different, different techniques um, and uh, see what effects you get. Now just need to get a bit more off there. It's not a lot of silver there under anyway, but uh, just use the brush, this um, this brush that I've uh, well and truly killed, and we just drag it down very gently. And really, no pressure at all because um, it's quite a stiff brush. So with the roof now drying, we're going to um, get on with our grime. So we're using Vallejo Air. This is dirt, and it's going to be fairly gently along the. Uh, on the top edges and we're going to create some some streaks and runs of the uh, of the dirt and the grime so while it's still wet I'll get a brush and we'll just drag down and we're going to do a few layers of this probably uh, what do you want to get the effect in one go now I know some people like to let it dry and then they'll use a, uh, a thinners or a uh, IPA solution and they'll clean off the bits they want um, this is the way I prefer to do it each to their own I guess we'll give that another layer in a bit and the front which is uh, the really it probably is one of the worst class 37's fronts I've uh, I've I've had it's just so uh, so plain and boring there's really not a lot of detail on there at all unfortunately um, and those lights are are painted on there a decal or something um, but anyway we'll see what we can do so this is again Vallejo Air Dirt and we're just going to use brushes in downward directions and some of it will catch in the detail or the little detail there is 
um, and some of it will create a streak and we'll come back and we'll add more layers to that as well in a bit just need a little bit more at the top there just to accentuate the top of the uh, of those lights there and again on the bonnet now these these bonnet areas um, they also tend to get really really black and dirty so uh, we'll be uh, we'll be adding some suit onto those in a little bit as well so we'll come back for a second second pass uh, of this uh, crime now you can add in you can actually start to add runs in that go all the way down the side of the body if that's what you choose to do but again we're going to get the brush and this is a softer brush and we're just going to drag it down again and this creates our runs. So if there's any bits that you don't like, like that bit there that's just done, we can uh, add more paint in and then we can, um, we can add further runs as well. Now this brush is very slightly damp, so that does help to, uh, to create these runs as well. Try to keep uh, vertical strokes, because that's the way the, the, run, uh, the water will run off the roof line. So, um, yeah, vertical strokes. Just gonna put a bit of more paint in there because it's uh, it's revealed too much of the original paintwork. And then we're using the same colour Vallejo dirt, and we're just doing this along the bottom of the um, body, just to uh, just to blend that in a little bit, and then we'll add some lines. Some, some extra runs and then on the on the bogies and the, the battery boxes and the um, Vallejo air um, this dirt colour looks a bit green when it comes out. It does actually cover a bit weirdly on, on plain black, um, but it will dry a different colour. It just looks a bit weird when we uh, when we first use it. And this is just a dark brown. Um, any any colour will do. Any sort of shade of brown. It's just to add, add a contrast and a bit of uh, a bit of extra detail into the um, into the bogies there. So it's just like different types of mud and grime. Maybe one's wet and one's dry. And we're going to use these to just to colour in these um, these exhausts and these vent areas, rather than being uh, all black. So we're just putting in this dark brown. Just using it very gently, just to uh, just to make the detail of those um, events pop a little bit. And then a couple of a uh, couple of runs as well. They're very uh, they're very slight, but they are they are there. And now we've got uh, just plain black. Oh, I actually added the black to the uh, the remainder of the brown that was in the in the airbrush. So this is a really, really ultra dark brown, black. Um, and just to add some soot to the uh, around the exhaust on the uh, on the top where the fan is, and then a few runs down the side. That vent is already black from the from the factory, so. Uh, well, I assume that that's where the uh, the soot is going to be coming from. So we'll just put extra in there, just a touch in these um, these grills. So we've added a, a little bit of black to the um, to those bonnet areas as well. Now these 
can get sort of pretty grotty, but um, I'm going to go too mad with this. And it's just a little bit along the roof lines that, that just um, doles down that silver that we've chipped at. And then our, um, our weathering powders. So this is just humbrol, it's mainly humbrol uh, dark earth. And this ties all the colours together that we've used on the um, on the bogies and on the underbody. So this will catch in all the places. <clears throat> Where uh, where mud would normally uh, sort of accumulate in the in those steps and around the uh, around all the, the bits on the on the bogies that um yeah they're just sort of traps for for mud and water and grime. Now the windows I didn't mask um they 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 were difficult to do because they are sort of sunken back so I've just used an airbrush cleaner and on a cotton bud and a small stiff brush you can see here let me just let that soak in for a couple of seconds and that will take off most of the paint it just looks like it's um it's all been half-heartedly cleaned at some point and then uh, lacquer uh, this is a polyurea I'll try that again. This is a polyurethane varnish from Vallejo, uh, which is a matte finish. So it just makes everything nice and dull. It ties all the colours together, so don't forget um, some of the colours will dull down just a little bit, especially the weathering powders. It looks a bit wet and shiny here, but it will dry in a matte finish. And then our final bits. Uh, just to add some grease now on this particular one We'll use the, uh, the grease on the springs down here. We just need to touch it in and We let it soak for a little while and capillary action will make it look like a, a just a nice uh, Greasy wet splodge really rather than any it, it, All the all the, the edge lines and the watermarks will go you can see it starting to dry back there on those kind of filler cap things so we have a line along the bottom, a lot of these boxes seem to get, um, whether it splashes up or drips down, I'm not sure. It seems to have uh, this little grease line along the bottom. Yeah, along the bottom of the bogies, and that's it, we're done. So from this, which is, it's you know, it's what it is. Um, and hopefully this looks a bit better than it did before. Uh, thank you for joining us again. I hope you enjoyed uh, watching the class 37 and we'll see you on our next video very soon. Bye for now and thanks for watching.